Hi everyone, it's been a while since I made my last stock analysis video, but in this video I'm going to cover a company I'm sure everyone has heard of before, and the company is called Ferrari. I usually don't look at companies outside of the US or Australia, but I've kind of had Ferrari at the back of my mind recently, and I've just taken a look at this company. Ferrari has had a huge amount of success for the last 50 plus years, but the question is, does it meet our investment principles, our four investment principles? I will cover that in today's video. Now, just a heads up, does Ferrari have a competitive advantage or a wide durable moat? Well, the obvious answer is that it does, but I'll break down what that competitive advantage is in this video. Before I get started, do not use stock analysis videos such as these that you'll find on the internet as a supplement for your own research. So I do encourage you to go out there and research companies for yourself. But if you've gained some value from these types of videos, please leave a like and subscribe below so you don't miss out on any future videos like these in the future. Ferrari is one of the most well-known car manufacturers in the world, but what makes it even more incredible is that Ferrari's total shipment volume last year was just 13,221 compared to 67.2 million across all car manufacturers. This means that Ferrari has only accounted for 0.02% of total car shipment volume in 2022. So what is it about Ferrari that makes it the most well-known and most desired car manufacturer in the world? Well, the answer has got to do with the history of Ferrari, which is very, very unique, that makes the brand one of the most valuable brands that it is today. The company was named after their founder, Enzo Ferrari, who started his own racing team called Scuderia Ferrari in 1929. However, he started off racing Alfa Romeo cars. Ten years later, in 1939, he started his own company called Auto Avio Costruzioni. I think that's how you pronounce it, but that was my best shot. And he later renamed it to Ferrari. The name is well known largely due to their Formula One racing team, which is the most successful racing team in the history of Formula One racing. From 1950 until today, Scuderia Ferrari has won 242 Grand Prix races, 16 Constructors World Titles, and 15 Drivers World Titles. Ferrari is the only team which has taken part in all editions of the championship, racing in more than 1,000 Formula One Grand Prix races. Their success in Formula 1 is a big reason they have a successful brand and can sell their cars at higher prices. Another strategy of preserving the exclusive nature of their brand is purposefully maintaining low supply compared to demand. Ferrari says on their annual report that we are not focused on market share as a performance metric. Instead, we deliberately manage our supply relative to demand to defend and promote our brand exclusivity and premium pricing. This is another reason why Ferrari has been able to sell their cars at a higher price and have higher margins compared to other car manufacturers. Ferrari's gross margins are around 50% compared to 20% that you will see in other manufacturers and this is in part due to their supply strategy. Another core element that adds to the uniqueness and what I think is another competitive advantage of Ferrari is that every model is designed very differently. Ferrari states that a guiding principle of the Ferrari style is that each new model represents a clear departure from prior models and introduces new and distinctive aesthetic elements, delivering constant innovation within the furrow of tradition. Most cars that you purchase will likely depreciate in value very, very quickly as soon as a car leaves the dealership, but Ferrari does a pretty good job at holding on to its value not only because of its low supply strategy, but because every model is designed differently. If we look at the percentage of owners of a Ferrari with more than one Ferrari and cars sold to existing owners as a percentage of total vehicles sold, this tells us that whoever buys a Ferrari is likely to remain a customer for a long time and also is likely to be repeat purchases. We are now going to explore some quantitative data and if we look at their past financial data, Ferrari's total revenue has been growing consistently since the time they went public in 2015. Net tangible assets and return on net tangible assets are high. Net tangible assets refers to the total physical assets of a company minus all intangible assets 
and all of its liabilities. In other words, net tangible assets focus on the physical assets, such as their property, plants, and equipment, as well as their inventories and cash. Any intangible assets, such as the company's goodwill, and any other intangibles are left out and were subtracted by the total liabilities. This is good to know for a company like Ferrari that is a capital intensive business. The term capital intensive refers to business processes or industries that require large amounts of investment to produce a good or service and thus have a high percentage of fixed assets like their property and equipment. Examples of capital intensive industries include car manufacturers like Ferrari, oil production, refining, steel production, telecommunications and transportation sectors. Because Ferrari requires production facilities to manufacture their own vehicles, property plans and equipment and its inventories are Ferrari's two largest and most important assets. Well, without these, then Ferrari won't be able to manufacture their vehicles and won't generate nearly as much sales. A high return on net tangible assets tells us that those physical assets are producing good returns for the business. And another point to consider is that usually when the physical assets of a business grows, it makes it a lot harder for a company to maintain a high return on those assets. But this hasn't been the case for Ferrari. Net tangible assets have been growing every year, but their return on those assets have remained consistently high, which is a very good sign that the company has a large competitive advantage. Now, there are many ways you can assess to see if management is competent and they're honest. However, the most common way I would say is to check how management is getting compensated. But I'm not gonna do that in today's video because that will just take too much time for me to get through. Another way is to check the return on invested capital over a long period of time. And in the case of Ferrari, their return on invested capital is pretty good. It's hovering just under the 20% mark. Now, what return on invested capital tells us is that for every dollar, the company reinvests back into the business. Well, in the case of Ferrari, a return on invested capital around 20%. This means that they are generating 20 cents in profit for every dollar invested into the business. Now, if you are investigating a company and you find that the return on invested capital is really low, then this tells us that management would be better off distributing the profit or you know, the company's earnings back to their shareholders in the form of a dividend. So the shareholders can reinvest those profits so they can generate a higher return on their investment. So this is a vital metric to check out to see if management is capable and honest and and is investing shareholders money back into the business effectively. The company's operating income to revenue margins have been growing consistently and this is because shipment volumes have also been increasing and we can see that free cash flow has been growing as well, which is a positive sign that the company does not need debt to maintain its operations and is a self-funded business. To calculate the intrinsic value of this business, I'm going to apply the discounted cash flow calculator. And this is done by taking the current year free cash flow. So in the case of Ferrari, it will be at the end of 2022, and then project the rate of growth that I think Ferrari will produce in the future and discount it back to the present value on a per share basis. For Ferrari, we are going to project that free cash flow will grow at 9% with a 15% discount rate. I don't think it's a good idea to estimate a higher growth rate than that since Ferrari's strategy is to limit their supply and I think if they try to grow too fast, then it will, re then it will reduce the value of his brand. This leaves us valuing the entire business at around 12,500,000 dollars with a buy price of around $70 per share. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, George, that is just way too cheap. The current price is around $300 per share. It's never going to go down that low. Well, the thing is, you just don't know. And right now, it seems like everyone holds the same opinion about Ferrari, that it's a great company with good growth potential in the future. And that is obviously reflected in the current stock price. The reason why we have a 15% discount rate is because we want a really, really good return on our investment. And secondly, if 
My growth projections are wrong and Ferrari doesn't grow at 9%, but instead grows at around 5%, then I can still expect an above average return on my investment. With that in mind, it seems like Ferrari meets three out of four investment principles with the only one missing is the margin of safety price. And that's pretty much a wrap with today's video. If you gained some value out of it, please leave a like and subscribe below and I will chat to you all soon. Take care everybody, bye bye.